They knew that they were um, iron workers and not canal builders. And so they found someone who was. They found Canvas White. Uh, he's no relation of Josiah, but uh, he was, uh, you know, the excellent choice for them because <coughs> he was one of the few people in this new country that actually had any experience of building canals. He had gone over to study canal building in Europe. He'd been one of the engineers on the Erie Canal for, for New York. And he knew his stuff. So he was an excellent choice. And he spent part of that five years just surveying the land, seeing where best to put the canal. Because it does matter. Um, when Pennsylvania was building the Delaware Canal, they made a lot of mistakes. Uh, they built the canal too close to the Delaware River. They just had it you know, follow the river slavishly. And that meant that whenever the Delaware River flooded, so did the canal. So it, the canal was always out of commission or being repaired in some way. Um, it, it just turned into a money pit. So Canvas, he actually surveyed the land. And as you can see, we're not right next to the, the Lehigh River at the moment. We'll, we'll get closer when we get up to the lock tender's house. But you know, the Lehigh River is way over there. Instead, we follow a hillside. And that's really smart because that means that one whole side of your canal is already built for you. You don't have to put up a bank on that side. It's already there. So already they're saving themselves time and money in building the canal. But speaking of that money, the way they raised money to build the canal was by selling stock. Josiah and Erskine, they established the Lehigh Coal Navigation Company, and they sold shares in their own way. And that was a revolutionary thing back then. Um, selling stock in your company and having a sort of a publicly owned company, that was a new thing. Um, it was really radical, um, but it worked. And they were able to raise all of the money that they needed to. So when they actually started doing the construction in 1827. They had all their ducks in a row. It actually only took them two years to build the whole stretch. And it's about 47 miles from Mock Chunk down to Easton. And uh, about a 60 foot wide canal. And it was about six to eight feet deep initially. Well, that was a lot of work. Um, there was a lot of Irish immigrants, actually, uh, and uh, just using shovels and pickaxes and wheelbarrows. They didn't have any of the, the luxury of our, you know, mechanized backhoes and dump trucks that we have today. They had to move it all by hand, so it was a lot of work. But once again, here, here's where Candace White's intelligence and his expertise came into play. because. They didn't actually dig a 47 mile long canal. They built in sections. Uh, this particular section is two and a half miles long. Um, it's bordered on both sides by a lock. But at the end of our canal here, on the other side of that lock, there isn't another section of the canal starting. There's just the Lehigh River. And we're starting to hear what makes that possible? They put nine dams in along the Lehigh. Behind those dams is sort of an artificial lake, uh, a very slack water pool. It's a lot like our canal, actually. It's nice and flat. There isn't a lot of current. And it's deep enough to take a canal boat like ours. So they were able to save themselves from having to build about 10 miles of the 47 mile stretch. Um, so they saved themselves a lot of time and effort doing that just by using what they already had available to them, the Lehigh. And then all of our water comes from the Lehigh as well. And that dam helps to, make, to, helps to ensure that we always have enough water coming into the canal. It creates enough pressure behind it that we're able to feed the water into the canal a feeder gate. Uh, it's a stone structure that we're going to be approaching. So you can kind of think of each two and a half mile section of canal like its own gigantic bathtub. Uh, you've got 
to fill it with water, and you have a faucet, which is your feeder gate. And then back behind us, I can show us on, on our way back, uh, we have our drain as well, in order to allow water in and out of the canal as we need to. And we do have to let the water in and out. Um, during the winter time, uh, you don't want freezing water in your canal, so you drain it out. So every winter, to this day, we drain the canal completely, um, so that it's nice and dry. And then in the springtime, we open the gates back up and fill it back up. So now you can get a, a good view of the dam. Uh, this one's known as the chain dam. Uh, it used to have a chain across the top there to uh, prevent boats who had made some miscalculations from going over the edge. No. Uh, we don't have that chain anymore. This is actually a replacement dam. It's not the original one built in the 1820s. And you can also see the, uh, the lock structure here. So the, this particular lock, it guarded the entrance to the Lehigh River because as you can see behind the dam, we're actually at the same level as the Lehigh. Um, so they didn't have to raise or lower the boat in the lock, but they did have to sort of guard the entrance. There would have been a little bit of a pressure difference between the two. Um, so this one was solely to, uh, to guard the entrance to the Lehigh. So we're going to make our second turn, so I'm going to need you to remain seated again. a lock, you always had to alert the lock tender that you were coming. So, um, let's see if I can manage it here. <laughs> I've got a, a conch shell horn here. This is a bit of a status symbol amongst the canal boat captains. It meant that you had to uh, ventured out to a port where we'd met up with some other sailors who'd perhaps been down to the Caribbean. And uh, a conch shell, I know it seems like an odd choice for a horn, but it's actually ideal because unlike a, a metal horn, it's not going to rust on you. And if you take good care of it, it's pretty much indestructible. Um, it will last you for, for decades. In fact, we've got some of the museum that were from the original um, time period when the canal was working. Um, and they're just in as fine condition as they were back then. Um, they're really handy items. 